Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 43. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 6, click on the link below the video. Hey, I'm going to click on the topic sheet. This chapter is about payroll. Lots of topics in this chapter here. We're going to start on the sheet called Time in Excel. Now, time is important. There's a time number format. And if you're going to do payroll and keep track of employees' hours, when they came in in the morning, when they left in the day, and you want to calculate how many hours they worked, you got to understand time number format and time math in Excel. Now let's just start right here. Entering time in Excel is pretty easy. 6 colon 0, 0 space AM. It's very important that you keep that colon and you have a space there. This is the convention hours colon minutes colon seconds, a space, and then AM or PM. So I'm going to hit Enter. In fact, there should be no space right there. All right. Now, let's. we can put in seconds. We're not going to in this uh, class here. But you could type colon 6, colon uh, 10 minutes, colon 11 seconds, space AM. All right, that's OK, too. We're not going to be dealing with seconds, just uh, minutes. Now, I want to try this again here. I want to type 6 AM. This is good practice. 6 colon, no space there. If you put a space there, Excel won't understand it. The minutes, we just happen to have no minutes there. Space, and then AM or PM. All right, now I want to notice something. I'm looking here. I type this in, and I look up here. Oh, looks like it, it underneath there, it has some seconds. but time number format is different than currency. And let me just show you an example here of currency and remind ourselves what we saw. I'm going to type in 100. I see the 100 there. I see the 100 there. I come up here and I go currency. I see the currency here. I see the extra characters, the dollar, the decimal, 0, 0. But up here, oh, I can see what's actually in the cell. Now let's do this with time. I type this in, but it's there. Ah. But it's not showing us in the formula bar what is actually in the cell. Because there has to be a number there if we're going to track number of hours worked. right? See that AM? That's text. If we were to type in text, it would consider it text. You can tell by default number numbers are always aligned to the right. Now, let's look up here. And it says custom up here. And it's got a time format. But I want to go and apply general to this. Now, what's in the cell underneath will be shocking at first. Now, there is this option for general. Um, uh, there's down here the keyboard shortcut for general number format. To wipe away all the number format is Control Shift tilde or grave accent. So I'm going to apply it that way, Control Shift tilde. Tilde is to the left of the number 1. What? 0.25? I type 6 AM, and Excel has a number in the cell 0.25. What does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and see how this is how Excel sees time. It never is going to have a whole number like hours worked 6 or something. It's always going to be a decimal. When, it, when you type in 6 AM, this is what it does in behind the scenes. It says, oh, you're talking about 6 hours out of a 24-hour day. So it's always going to be a number between 0 and 1, 0.25. What? No problem. That's always You always consider that either the proportion of one 24-hour day or the decimal that represents the part to the whole. It's always comparing part to whole. All right. Now, let's just prove, before we see the implications of this for calculations, let's do it one other way. Let's type 0.25, Control Enter, and prove to ourselves. Because we know number formatting is a facade, right? So I'm going to type that number in, go up here, and say time. This will apply the seconds. If you don't like that, Control 1. And you can choose any kind of time you want, including military. Or I'm going to choose that one right there. So Excel, no matter if you type a, a time in and wipe away the time number format or put a number in the cell, 
and apply time number format, that 0.25 is always going to be in the cell. Don't forget, we've seen this a lot in this class. Number formatting is a facade. It's a Halloween mask. It's like paint on the outside of the house. In our case, time underneath is always going to be a decimal. Now, let's before we see how to do time math for payroll situations, I just want to apply and see what happens to different numbers here. And this will be a nice little chart. You'll see with a number, and over here we'll see the time. So here is this column, and I want to see what happens. I can already guess 0.33333 is 1 divided by 3, 1 third of a day, or 8 divided by 24. So I'm going to apply a time number format right there, or there's a keyboard shortcut, Control Shift 2. Control Shift 2. All right, so whoa, that is, that's weird. Oh, but that makes sense, right? Because if you had 8 equals 8 divided by 24, oh yeah. How about this one? This is uh, 4. Well, we can't do 4 divided by 24. We have to say 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So equals 16 divided by 24. Ah, because 16 represents 4 p.m. That's 16 hours through the day. But here's the thing you want to be careful of. 1 is the same as 0, which means it's exactly when the day changes. And 12 p.m. is noon. Oh, yeah, halfway through the day. Also, you want to notice that any integer, the time number format is not going to see that 1. It's just going to see the 0.333 and treat it as 8 AM. All right now, let's go ahead and see how we use this in practice. All right, so we have an employee, a wage, and here's their time in and uh, time in in the morning, time out in the afternoon hours worked. Let's first look at the base. The basic of time math will always be the later time minus the earlier time. 1 p.m. 1 p.m. would be equals not 12, but 13 divided by 24. All right, so that's 1 p.m. I'm going to type 1 p.m. And then I'm going to type 8 AM. Notice that doesn't count as a time because it doesn't have the convention with the colon and everything in the space. No space there, so that's not. So 8 AM. Oh, OK. So equals 8 divided by 24. Which one of those numbers is bigger? Oh, the later time, right? The further through a 24-hour day is always going to be the later time. So you always take later time minus earlier time, right? Time out minus time in for payroll, right? Here's the time out. Here's the time in. So let's just subtract this and see what we get. Later time minus the earlier time, or time out minus time in. Now, when I hit Enter, it's going to show us time number format, because these cell reference are, go are going <coughs> and sucking the number format down there. So when I Control Enter, oh, it's showing. 5 a.m. But I want to wipe that away because I want to prove to you that that decimal is in the cell. So I want to wipe this away with general. General format control shift tilde. Ah, 80, uh, 0.20833333. Now I'm going to move this over to the side. That's a, a useful note there. But I'm going to prove to myself. I want to prove that, well, I can see it's five hours. I can do that in my head. So I'm going to go equals 5 divided by 24. Oh, OK. So that really is the decimal equivalent of 5 compared to 24. So that's not going to work, and here's why. If you take your pay, boy, YN would be mad if you were the payroll accountant. And you're like, 1975 times the number of hours worked. And of course, it's going to give you some teeny number, because that's not in hours. I want this to show 5 hours here. So here's what you do. Well, let's look up here. We took 5 divided by 24, and it gave us this decimal, right? So to go from the decimal back up to 5, which is number of hours as an integer, what do we do? You have to multiply by 24. And this will always be the case. Here is our formula, our basic formula for hours worked 
is always later time minus earlier time in parentheses times 24. And that 24 is perfectly OK to type in the formula, because that is an example of a number that will never change. Now, you, if you change these inputs, let's say this person worked till 111. All right? Ooh, that's like 5.18883333. But that is still the number of hours worked. And that is the appropriate number to multiply time wage per hour. Again, you know, if you had to do this by hand on paper, you could do this in your head. But imagine having to process the entire, all of the employees at the business. Being able to do it in Excel with a single formula, of course, is fast and accurate. All right, now let's do our formula. Our formula for gross pay is always going to be hours worked times wage per hour. This is for an hourly employee. And we have to use round. We're multiplying decimals, right? So 5 hours times 975, comma 2, close parentheses. Now check this out. When you have an integer like this times 1975, you're not going to get any extraneous decimals, right? It just happens to be, in this case, we have a clean number here times pennies and dollars. You're never going to get a rounding error. But the reason we do the round is because if this was 11 minutes after, then we get a hugely messy decimal here. And the round function saves us. All right, now I'm going to put this back to 1, 1 PM, Control Z. All right, that's fine and dandy. But what if this person had a lunch? So our next formula is going to take this one step further. Here is our YN. YN came in at 8 AM, left for lunch at 1 PM, 2 PM to 4.30 PM. Again, I have these numbers kind of uh, nice here, so we can do this in our head and see that it works. But of course, if you had little messy, messy minutes, it would be hard to do in your head, right? All right, so what's the formula? Well, notice we have two times. There's a later time and an earlier time, and then a later time and an earlier time. So I'm simply just going to use logic. I'll do these subtraction. That'll give me the proportion of a 24-hour day, or the decimal that represents uh, the 24-hour day for this, and also do it for here. Later time minus earlier time. So here's our formula. I'm going to start with the early one. This, that's the later time minus the earlier time, or the time out minus the time in. Now right now, that would just give me, boom, that, right? That's a number formatting. It would give me uh, 0.20833. Ah, but I need to add to that the second period of time. So I'm going to go plus, and then later time minus earlier time. Time out minus time in. Now, the reason we can just slap it like that is because minus, plus, minus, those are all on the same line of the order of operations. So it'll just do it left to right, and it will be perfect. Now, we know that that's <coughs> Suck in the format, so I'm going to apply general. I'm going to use Control Shift tilde. You can watch up here, Control Shift tilde, general. So we work 0.3125. I have no idea how many hours that is. I could do this in my head. This was five, seven and a half hours, right? If we can do it in our head, what do we do? Oh, we have to multiply it by 24. So I simply put close parentheses times 24. Again, that's a nice clean number. If we had 1 here, ooh, we get or even 10, right? Or even 15. All right, so I'm going to Control Z, Z, leave it 2 o'clock. Now our formula, same as we did before for gross pay, equals round the number of hours worked times the wage. Comma two close parentheses. Now over here I have hours times wage per hour. Either is fine. Two times one is the same as one times two. So multiplication can be done in any order. Oh, 168.75. All right. So in summary for this video, we learned a little bit about Excel time number format. We know we type in number colon hour colon minute minute space. AM or PM, right? So here we entered a PM. 
Excel will always see that as a compare the hours to the 24 hours of all the hours in one day, and it will give us either a decimal or a proportion that represents the part to the whole. So that number is always going to be under, right? Under the time number format, it's always going to be some number. Our hours worked is end time minus begin times times 24. Hours work, including lunch, is just times 24. And the keyboard shortcut for time number format is Control Shift 2. I actually want to add a seventh tip here, and I want to show you an example. Um, if you ever take, I'll just copy this and paste it right here. So if you ever, instead of taking the later time minus the earlier time, you accidentally go earlier minus the later time, it will give you an error. Pound sign, pound, pound, pound. It does not mean the column is not wide enough. Negative time cannot be displayed in Excel. So if you see that, immediately edit your formula right. Later time minus earlier time. And then you'll get the correct uh, formula, right? So don't for and I'll add this point right here, 7. If you, uh, you get a if you do time in and it's time out. It's called a negative time. It's not allowed. Oops, so I should have put a period there. Now, one other point about this, and uh, I want to show you down here. There's some other videos. If you ever actually have to do time, and a lot of people do payroll in Excel, but if you ever have to do this, you might run into the situation where you have a night shift. And in that case, 8 PM, the person comes in, and they leave at 1 AM. That means if we were to do our little formula, time out minus time in, you get an error. Now, these videos will explain the solution here, and it's not part of this class at all. But in case you're curious, there's the formula. You just have to put your calculation in the mod function. right? And if you want to learn about that, you can learn about that there. All right, uh, here's our points for our first video, time math and time number format in Excel. See you next video. Ba next video, we'll actually do a huge time sheet and do a bunch of calculations. All right, see you next video.